It's about four hours before Sting is set to perform at Caesars Palace's Coliseum and Hess sitting in an empty showroom marveling at the stage and production of his Las Vegas residency show. This is what it looks like. He happily wonders as graphics fill the room and his band tunes instruments in preparation for sound check. It's not often I get to see it this way. In fact, I never get to see it this way. I'm really freaked out by this. God, this is great. That very room won't be vacant much longer, as it will soon be packed with over 4,000 Sting fans ready to be awed, like Sting, by the highly regarded residency show. Since Sting's Las Vegas residency, My Songs, premiered in October 2021, Hess drawn rave reviews and the show has been a consistent sellout. Hess now planning to stay in Vegas a bit longer, as Hess added six new dates to his slate April 1st, 2nd, 5th, 7th, 8th and 9th, having extended his residency run into 2023. This is without a doubt one of the greatest stages in the world, not only in terms of its architecture, but historically, he told people in an exclusive interview. You know, people who have played Caesars Palace is this pantheon of great artists, so joining that roster is something I'm really not sad about at all. It's wonderful. Although the likes of Rod Stewart, Elton John, Madonna, Celine Dion and countless others have all played Caesars Palace before, the 17-time Grammy winner admitted to initially being apprehensive about bringing his talents to Vegas. Now, though, having seen the audiences and energy, has sold. I can't imagine a better place to be. Vegas is an attraction, he said. You're in the middle of it, right in the center of it and it's absolutely fabulous. So, I'm enjoying every minute of it. My Songs is a past and present and everything in between peek into Sting's long career, as he threads in his solo material and his work as lead singer of the Police. Coincidentally enough, even after six decades of songs, the icon doesn't have a favorite tune from his catalog. It's my job to find something new every night in a song that I may have been performing for decades, and I always do, he said. It's something incremental. It may not be noticed by anyone but me. His wife, Trudy Styler, on the other hand, can pretty much pinpoint her favorite song. Her favorite songs are ones she identifies as being about us or about her, Sting said. We have a song called The End of the Game, which is about a love affair between two foxes on the run. We think that's about us, and it is. It's us against the world. With his 71st birthday coming up in October, Sting certainly has more years behind him than ahead of him, but he has no plans to stop performing. I'm going to keep going, he said. Mick Jagger is 79 next month. Hess going as good as he ever was. Hess amazing, phenomenal. Sting is also as good as he ever was, and he continues to be a student of music, even thinking back to advice he got from legendary composer and arranger Gil Evans. I worked with him towards the end of his life, and he said to me, you know, there are no wrong notes. It's the note that follows what you think of as a wrong note, Sting recalled. He was philosophically saying you make mistakes. All human beings make mistakes. It's how you respond to that mistake that defines your life, not the mistake itself, because it can open up a whole range of possibilities if you have the right reaction to it.
Steam's reaction to Vegas, more, more, more.